Thus saith the Lord unto his church, Many of my servants have felt the inner witness of my spirit that they should not put their confidence in certain ministers on the air or on TV or on the internet who are leading them into perdition through love of money. And some of these ministers of darkness are quite clever about it because they pretend that they are preaching holiness. They plead for people to come and accept Christ and get their lives straightened out. But their own lives are a big mess. They do the very things that they warn others not to do. Some of them even exhort you to look forward to going to heaven if you're poor on this earth. But while you're here to invest what little you've got into their own kingdom. Many of you have deeply repented of listening to those leeches and being misled by them. My, what beautiful music you heard on their network. What angelic faces were raised to heaven, singing the sweetest songs of praise, supposedly unto the Lord. Those clean-cut, smiling televangelist families made you feel like raggedy hillbillies who could learn a few things from them about proper family values. Despite the fact they live in a wonderful world of their own, far removed from the grit and grime of ordinary people's workaday lives, and you couldn't reach them to pray for you personally, even if you wanted to. So many of you disillusioned Christians who stopped watching these TV characters fell hook, line, and sinker for their song and dance act. You swore these people were paragons of holiness who you must look up to, and besides, if they weren't there to pray for or pray on you, then who else would? In their own subtle way, praying preachers made you feel guilty for sending in a prayer request without making at least a small donation. You'd see one or two preachers hollering and screaming about moral decay in America, and wasn't it a shame Americans didn't know how to keep their homes together? Then you'd find out they themselves had left their first husband or wife for some sexier looking reprobate. You might have read about hush money being paid to keep dirty little secrets concealed from the public. No, a frilly white dress and stage makeup does not transform an ordinary woman into an angel, nor does having lots of money and fame make someone holier. Some folks have dumped a ton of money into these TV ministries, lured by the promise that my God can't fail to multiply back a hundredfold what you send in tomorrow's mail. Which Jesus are they talking about when they promote a jet-setting Savior who wore designer studs and rode a Cadillac donkey on his missionary trips? Those TV preachers got so many of my people's hopes higher and higher, then crash, for closure day came, the husband lost his job, someone got sick, marriages broke up. No good ever comes from perverting the gospel of Christ with a make-believe mixture of Las Vegas luck and scattered, misapplied, twisted biblical references. No, I, the Lord, am not honor-bound to bless the gambling some of my people do with their rent money or paychecks. Your earnings are needed to buy the necessities of life for your families and to pay people you owe. 2 Thessalonians 3.12, Romans 13.8 If you rob the landlord to send some TV preacher a so-called faith seed, it will yield thorns of bitterness instead of a blessing. And unless I directly intervene, the money will not be there to pay the landlord on writ day. Neither Paul nor any of the other apostles ever taught the Christians to gamble with their paychecks. If you want to gamble, go to do it in Las Vegas, not at church, and definitely not in my name. That rich celebrity Christ with the diamond jewelry and Cadillac donkey only exists in the warped imagination of TV preachers and mega church, mega church ministers of darkness. And why are these thieves able to swindle my flock so easily? Desperation, spiritual blindness, and ignorance of what my word really does teach 
about proper giving and receiving. Preachers count on people being so obsessed with getting their bills paid and finding their next meal that they don't have time to spend in my presence, hearing my voice for themselves and rightly dividing my word of truth. Preachers pass themselves off as being a quick fix solution to Christians' problems. They give off such an aura of purity and holiness on TV with their soft singing, their modulated earnest voices, the beautiful studio background glistening with gold, the heavenly music, the impassioned pleas for you to come to Christ and bring your wallet along with you for the ride. How much closer can you get to heaven than watching them? Satan doesn't appear as a gruesome, warty monster waving a pitchfork and yelling for you to watch out because he's going to gobble you up. He's a sly old snake of a devil. Genesis 3, 1, Ephesians 6, 11. And a master of deceit. He appeared to Eve as a gorgeous creature who beguiled her with his smooth sales pitch. He sold her a piece of fruit in exchange for her soul, and it took the death of my precious son to win her soul back. Preachers are selling you a sweet delusion as insubstantial as cotton candy. Oh, it tastes great for five minutes, but it just might leave you with a toothache and a sick belly. Preachers spout off a lot of hot air to bribe or even intimidate my people to send in their hard-earned cash. They're spiritual snake charmers doing spiritual witchcraft to beguile my flock, and they often attribute such deceitful works of darkness to my Holy Spirit. These filthy thieves blaspheme the Holy Ghost for cash by persuading you that he's the one telling you to gamble away your family's money for a miracle that never comes, and the preachers know it will never come. So why do so many Christians get suckered in by these thieves and liars? If your hog gets well fed from your own trough, it won't go wandering off to somebody else's pen to feed. As long as the prodigal son stayed home where he belonged, he had plenty of good food to eat. But when he wandered off and reached a point of desperation, he was willing to eat anything, even empty husks. To fill his hungry belly. But what if the prodigal son had wandered away because no food was available at his own house? Many believers get only an empty sermon and powerless programs at their local church and virtually no fellowship or friendship. Christians are sometimes reluctant to pray for one another because they don't really feel like their prayers will make any difference. Or they're too spiritually cold or backslidden to even want to pray for someone else. They can't even seem to get their own prayers to work to meet their own needs. And this is because spiritual malnutrition causes spiritual weakness. The overworked pastor is expected to shoulder the lion's share of the burden at some churches, while the rest of the congregation are paying passive spectators. Such passivity is encouraged by church leaders, self-appointed blind leaders of the blind. They want the people to depend on them instead of the Lord, and they largely discourage or limit the body ministry taught by Paul in 1 Corinthians chapter 12. In doing this, they quenched the Holy Spirit. When the sermon is preached, the pastor will read through certain passages and he'll skip over any verses which teach the miraculous works of God which are to be done through members of the body of Christ. Non-miraculous verses will be read in the passage because they don't present so much of a challenge to a weak faith. Christians are taught that the day of miracles is past so no use asking the pastor to pray for that sickness to get healed or that money need to be met. If you're broke, they'll only tell you to go get an extra job. Evangelism among the lost is strictly achieved through verbal persuasion, not the power of the Holy Spirit to miraculously meet needs, as was the case in the first century church. Galatians 3, 5, 
1 Corinthians 4:20, 1 Corinthians 12 verses 10 and 28. Sadly, a lot of believers depend on the warmth and friendliness broadcast by TV preachers because they aren't getting any close fellowship with real people in their meetings. That preacher looks you in the eye and speaks in such a sweet, entreating voice that he or she must have your best interest at heart. They must love you. So take a giant leap of faith and land in the promised land of prosperity. Does this not sound like what Satan told my son when he was being tempted in the wilderness? Jump off the pinnacle of the temple because God won't let you down. But what did Jesus say to the devil? He told Satan to get lost. You shall not tempt the Lord thy God. Matthew 4, 7. No good ever comes from jumping off a cliff as an act of faith. When preachers use soft lighting, sweet music, and fancy theatrics to make you think it's the Holy Ghost moving you to do something stupid. Grab your wallet and run. It will be better for Ananias and Sapphira in the day of judgment than for that servant of Satan. The reason for the so-called success of TV preachers is because, generally speaking, my Latter-day Church has failed to do what I've called them to do. Instead of feeding the hungry, I see so many poor moms and kids being turned away at church offices and told to go find extra work, and that happens while the pastor is living like a king off on vacation somewhere. Instead of praying earnestly for the sick to be healed, I see preachers laying the blame for sickness and other problems squarely on the shoulders of Christians who are getting cursed for failure to tithe despite the fact tithing is not commanded to Christians under the New Covenant. Instead of preaching a powerful Christ who conquered Satan, death, and hell, and rose from the grave, I see a weak Jesus being preached who can't do anything but help you have a good attitude about the attacks of the enemy. Instead of a good shepherd who feeds the sheep and fed the crowds literal bread, I see a rich tycoon Christ who only feeds people spiritually while taking literal bread out of pockets of the poor. All the while this imaginary Jesus praises the rich and despises the poor. Prosperity preachers promote another Christ who's nothing but a motivational guru who peddles earthly prosperity for your most sacrificial offering. And in the minds of many, the fancy dancy preacher is Christ, the Antichrist spirit. When he says give to God, he really means give to himself, because he needs another new car or plane. Because preachers don't allow the gifts to flow, and they deny my miracle working power, concerts and puppet shows fill the gap to draw crowds to church buildings. Such fleshly displays have replaced prayer meetings and many gatherings of the saints. In America, the so-called church has become a big business, just a big staged production to entertain lazy saints. Their prayers tend to be feeble and ineffectual because preachers have denied my power, and they say I've done everything I'm going to do about the devil till I come back. To diminish my role in your life, as deliverer, because you've been falsely taught that the day of miracles is over, is to strip me of my power and my glory. It is then that you have to lean on and exalt yourself as the only one who can make a difference in your life, and the devil wants you to think that way so he can whip you with one hand tied behind his back. Do you not know, my dear children, that apart from me you can do absolutely nothing? John 15:5. Be deceived no longer, my children. What you've heard on the news and the internet are only the first faint rumblings of a thunderous earthquake of judgment coming in my own house. In the coming days, weeks, and months, you will hear of even more lurid revelations about those famous preachers who were once the bedrock of your misplaced faith. Everything that can be shaken in these last days before my appearing will be shaken so that your faith may be in God alone.